Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to share 10 hidden or not so obvious features of Asana that you may have missed. In preparation for this video, I actually asked my team, what are the features that you find sharing with clients and you hear the feedback, well, I never knew that feature existed or I never thought you could use Asana that way. Well, that's what we're talking about in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Asana for your business, maybe you need to just improve the adoption and collaboration within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana support and consulting options. Now, the first hidden feature I'd like to show you, and you literally wouldn't even know this feature exists or that this is possible unless somebody told you, is that you can create sections of subtasks. For example, here. Now, you might be familiar already that in a project, you can have sections, you can create new sections here. And this is how you can set up headings like this, new requests assigned to designer, or if you go to the board layout, your sections become these columns. However, a lot of people don't realize you can create sections within your subtasks. So as you can see, I've got a section of subtasks for my design subtasks and another section for approvals. Now, if I want to create a new section, there's no button here to do this. The only way to do it is to put your cursor on a new line, start a new subtask, and then use the shortcut tab plus N. And then you can create your section. So I can call this posting and then I'll add my subtasks, post to Facebook, post to Instagram. And so this is a really useful feature that you can use to break up your subtasks, especially if you have quite a few subtasks on the task, you can then organize them into dif different sections or categories like this. Now the second feature I'd like to show you while I'm looking at these subtasks is you can create sub subtasks. So here I am, I'm on this parent task. This task is added to this design requests project. And here are my subtasks. If I click this little speech bubble on one of these subtasks, I can go, actually, let's do this one. I can go into this subtask. And so now I'm looking at the subtask page. I can see the parent task and the project here. And out, I can now add subtasks here. So I could break this down and maybe I could say, plan design ideas, design concepts in sketch. So I can create, I can break the work down further at the sub subtask level. If I want to, I could even click into these subtasks and create sub sub subtasks. Now I would caution you about going too deep into lots of layers because it can get quite confusing and a bit uh, messy. So be careful with that. But again, very useful way of breaking up a, a task or subtask into smaller steps. The third feature that I'd like to show you, and I've always thought this is quite unique to Asana, is that you can multi-home tasks into multiple projects. For example, I'm here in this design re uh, requests project still, and I have this task to design a new Apple logo. And here on the task, I can see the project and the section that this task is in. If I click here, add to projects, I can add this task to another project. So I can put it into Apple, for example. And now I could choose even the section that I want to put this in. This is really useful because it means, uh, for example, if my design team is working in this design request project, we want to keep them focused all on their design request work. And so they just have to look at this one project. Whereas I can go to my Apple project and I can see not just this task, but all the other tasks related to the work we're doing for this client. And if I update the task here in the Apple project, it also updates in design requests. So it's the same task. It's just accessible in two different projects. You can even do this with subtasks. So maybe I have this create design concepts subtask. Again, if I click into it, I can come up to the menu and I can add this to a project. So let's add this to Apple as well. And I'm going to choose my section. So now, I've taken this subtask, create design concepts, which is still a subtask here on this parent task, but I've multi-homed the subtask into the actual Apple project, where if I go there, there I can see that subtask. And when I put the subtask into a project, it now becomes a parent task. So it's actually a parent task in this project, as well as being a subtask of a task in the other project. So this is a really powerful way we can actually assign our tasks to multiple projects to create the visibility that we want. 
Okay, the fourth feature I'd like to show you is the ability to create follow-up tasks. So if I click on a task like this, in the menu, I have this option here to create a follow-up task. And so this is gonna be assigned to me, and Asana is actually gonna put a link to the task into this task that it's, that's assigned to me. So let's go ahead and create that now. If I go to my, my tasks page, I can see the follow-up task here. And actually you can see that this follow-up task, it's just private to me. This doesn't exist in any projects at the moment, and so only I can see this. And there's the link, so I can easily click that link to access the original task. So what's the use case for this? Well, this is really useful if maybe you've assigned a task to somebody else and you want to check up on it later, make sure it gets done, or you just want to set a reminder to, to kind of follow up and check in on that work later on. You can create yourself a follow-up task. The other place that you can do this is from your inbox. So if I go to my inbox here, you can see there's this notification that I've received and I can easily create a follow-up task here, similar to before. So that's just another place we can easily set reminders to ourselves to check in and follow up on this work later on. The fifth feature I'd like to show you is the ability to create saved filtered views in Asana. And at the time of recording, this is actually still a fairly new feature that a lot of people don't realize exists. So here I am again in design requests. And what I can do here is use my filters to filter these tasks. So maybe I only want to look at tasks of a certain type. So I have this request type custom field, and I can choose my type. Uh, maybe we want to see all of our web page design requests. So there we go. I've applied that filter now, and then I can come over here and I can save as a new tab. And so if you see what happened just there is this new board tab was created, and I'm going to rename this, and I'm just gonna call this web page requests. So now I've created this saved custom view. I can always go back to my main board where I can see all of my tasks. This is the unfiltered view, but I can then go to this new tab that I've created to easily view just those filtered tasks. So it's a really quick way that you can get to just those tasks you want to see without having to edit and adjust these filters every single time. You could even create pages for different people on your team. Maybe I do a filter where I say, show me tasks assigned to Jarvis. So again, I could save this view, save as new tab, and rename that to Jarvis. And so now I have multiple saved views that I could quickly toggle between. Okay, we're on to number six. And the sixth feature I'd like to show you is the ability to provide feedback on images. So here I have this image attached to a task in Asana. And when I click and open the image like this, we have this add feedback option up here. So if I click that, I can then click on the image itself and say, uh, I can create a task for any updates we need to make. So I could say here, change the font to something more interesting. So let's create that one. And maybe I choose which designer is going to do that. Create that task. Let's do one more. Um, replace the mug, whoops, mug with something new. So we'll create that one as well. So I've marked up the image. I've added my feedback. And if we close that image now, you can see down here on the task, we've got these new subtasks for the changes or the feedback that we now need to take action on. The seventh feature I'd like to show you is the ability to save searches in Asana. So a lot of people are working in Asana across multiple projects and they want to find all of the tasks assigned to somebody or perhaps due within the next week or two. And so some people think the solution is multi-homing, like I showed you before. Actually, there's a smarter way to do it. I can click up in the search field up here and come down to advanced search and I can specify the criteria for the tasks that I'm looking for. So I could say I'm looking for tasks assigned to not me and I want to look at tasks, actually let's not put a project requirement in here, let's just say tasks not assigned to me that are incomplete due within the next 14 days. So let's run that search and see what we find, here we go. And I can now customize this saved view, maybe I want to sort these tasks by project, or actually I quite liked leaving it as a signee, that's quite useful. Now I can easily see all the tasks assigned to my team due within the next 14 days. And when I'm happy, I can click the star up here and I can save this results page. So let's say 
uh, upcoming work in 14 days. So let's add to start. And now if I go to my start items, there is that search results page. And this is going to automatically update. If I assign a task to somebody that's due within the next 14 days, it'll show up here. So now I don't have to go searching and digging through my account to find these tasks. This page will just update automatically. Okay, the eighth hidden feature is the ability to share how you've customized your My Tasks with other team members. So let me give you an example first of me viewing the tasks of somebody on my team, Kayla here. And if I click, after I search her name, I can click view all tasks. And this is the default view. This is just me being able to see tasks that are visible to me, but I don't get to see how Kayla has customized her tasks. Now, if you go to your My Tasks and come to the share button here, you can type in the name of a teammate and you can share your tasks or how you've customized your tasks with that person. So I've shared mine with Warwick. Let me show Warwick's tasks because he's also shared his with me. And if I click view all tasks, now I don't just get to see the tasks that are visible to me, but I can see the sections that he's created. So he's got sections for recently assigned, today, scheduled, morning, afternoon, overflow, and I can see how he's managed uh, managed and organized his work. And if I need to, I can even move things around and reprioritize his work. So that's a really nice way you can give team members access to your tasks and show them how you've organized everything. Number nine. Now, you might be aware already that when you're working in a project, if you come up to the share menu here, there is the option to customize the types of notifications that you receive about a particular project. You can choose to receive notifications about any status updates. If the status of the project has changed from uh, on track to behind that kind of update, you can receive messages posted into the messages area of the project, and you can receive notifications about any tasks added to the project, even if those tasks are not assigned to you. So I can customize my notifications here at the project level, but if I have lots of projects, it's not really that convenient having to click through each one to customize those. The hidden feature I'd like to show you is if we come to the inbox here and then click manage notifications, under this project notifications section, so you literally have to open it to find it, um, we can choose the global setting for the types of notifications we want to receive about projects. So I can turn on or off the ability to get uh, notifications about tasks being added. Or I can click this button here and I can review all the projects that I'm in and I can customize them here all on this one screen, which is much quicker than clicking through the projects one by one. And finally, the 10th hidden feature I just couldn't resist showing you is if you use the shortcut tab B, you can make cats appear on your screen. How cool is that? Or you can use tab V if you're more of a dog person, you can make dogs appear on the screen. Not that useful, not, not a lot of use cases for this, but it is pretty fun and a pretty fun one to share with your team. So there we go. That was 10 hidden or not so obvious features in Asana. I hope at least one or two of those was new to you. If I did miss anything, if there's any useful features that you think should have been on this list, then feel free to leave me a comment below. And one more time, if you want to get the most out of Asana and optimize Asana for your business, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our support options. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.